don't have to look too far for an adventure in Mexico. In my life, I've lived there for six or seven years, trying to do some business down there, some bars, hostel. One of the most fascinating things about Mexico is the diversity. The diversity of terrain, the geography, the beaches, to the jungles, to the deserts, to the mountains. They got everything down there. The diversity of the people, the diversity of the dialects, the languages, the cultures, the music. They got the most beautiful beaches in the world, the scariest jungles in the world. And they got a culture that at one crossroads, you could be at a crossroads in Mexico and you could have a Hummer worth a quarter of a million and right beside it, an indigenous person selling their wares. Mexico is amazing. You don't have to go too far for an adventure there. And uh, myself and one of my friends had buddied up with the local immigrant population who were riding the train of death from South America to Central America. We were kind of fascinated by their journey because in a way for us it was the hero's journey. A journey that a lot of young lads aspire to, you know. Because truly that's what immigrants are doing. They're following their dreams and they are risking life and limb to do it. See, that's the thing that a lot of people don't think about when they're thinking about these immigrants coming into the country. These humans, whether or not it's legal or not, it's an incredibly, incredibly arduous, noble, insane journey. Take politics out of it. The human spirit involved is undeniable. As I said, we were looking for an adventure. So me and Damo, you know, we played a little football with them on the Sundays when they were rolling through. It was actually at a crossroads of the railroad and a street called Washington, ironically. We play football, we bring a little bit of food, and for that we were rewarded with their stories and just kind of living vicariously through them, that adventure that they were living that maybe one day we'd be brave enough to do. We got talking, and I guess one of them one day said, well, why don't you come with us? Now, we didn't do it then and there. We went off. We had a few gordi buenas con ceboy y cilantro. Some good tacos. And you got to eat the tacos in Mexico when you're down there. It's not a stereotype, it's a reality. It's where everybody goes, the taquerias on the streets late at night. Where everybody from all different incomes, all different classes, all different belief systems meet and share a meal together, but separate. And we're eating. And we've eaten our fill and we're thinking, those guys on the train, on the cold train going north, traveling for months, some of them traveling for months, to escape towards their dream. Anyway, we're eating. And we're thinking and we're talking. And we decide, let's do it. I'd be making some adventure videos down in Mexico. I went to the Sotano de los Colandrinos, which is a big hole in the ground. It's David Attenborough covered it. But I wanted to look at it too. It's just a big hole and the swallows come out of it in a circle. I'd lived in the jungle with a family for a little while I'll tell you about that in another time and we also lived on a desert island with an Argentinian special forces guy Gustavo he's not in the special forces anymore so I can tell you who he is <laughs> anyway such was our nature down there that we could adventure and such is the lifestyle in Mexico that no one's going to stop you adventuring if you want to hop in a train with a load of immigrants you can do it so we were basically besotted with these guys we just wanted to be in the adventure with them so one day we came down a bit of a peace offering brought some food some cans of tuna big garifant bottle of water shared it out some cokes played a little football waited for the sun to go down it didn't go down quick enough actually so me and my friend we went home and kicked it in luxury for a few hours because we couldn't handle the heat these guys were better prepared most of them traveling with nothing. Some of them traveling, I guess you could say, with everything. I saw a young couple, couldn't have been older than me. Probably not older than you. 
And they had a kid who couldn't have been more than a year old, wrapped, you know, swaddling clothes. I won't forget that, actually. They, were the, they must have paid off the security guard because they were the only people the security guard didn't chase with the stick. So there's about 100 immigrants. The train starts to take off. There's a big shout, this is it. Or, este, pen, este pendejo, este güero, corre, 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 cabrón. And we're running, whatever they, whatever they were saying. Anyway, we're running, running after the train. And I look back over my left shoulder and I see this man passing his baby to a woman on a moving train and then jumping up on the train. This is at night, going north on a train. They don't know where it's going or how long it's going to take before it stops. The train is moving about running speed at this point. I'm pulling myself up onto the top of the carriage. And that's the one thing you don't expect. You don't expect it to be as noisy as it is. We were prepared. We bought a cell phone. We brought a cell phone and another cell phone on two different networks. We brought water. We brought a thing because we had heard it gets really cold at night. We had brought like a blanket. We brought a backpack. Everyone, Nobody traveling on that train has more than a backpack. And they've been traveling for months. And we brought a little bit of food. And we also brought a machete because we had been warned it can be very dangerous. And you can carry a machete. You can't carry a gun in Mexico. You'll get shot or arrested. But you can carry a machete because it's a working man's tool. It's a safe bet. And you do want to at least posture that you can protect yourself. Anyway, the train starts moving. Everyone's very excited. We're wondering how long... First of all, we don't know, and they don't know how long the train's going to go for. It just keeps on building up speed. And then, sadly, 800 meters down the track, it stops. We get off the train. We walk back with the lads. And... uh, they waited for a few more days till the next appropriate train came true. We decided we'd seen enough and that it probably wasn't worth the risk. Anyway, I got a picture with all the lads. Uh, we played football with them before we we got on the train and uh, I still kind of hope one of them will um, use that email that I gave them to say that they made it here or at least they're well. Google it. It's called The Train of Death. It comes up from South America, true Central America, to the northern border. And uh, I just thought it was an interesting story maybe to share with you guys today. Because you can look at immigrants in any way you want, you know. You can look at them politically. You can look at them as uh, good or bad. But one thing you can't deny is it takes courage to travel alone, late at night, in the darkness, on a train, not knowing where you're going all just to follow your dreams (laughs) you know it's a hero's journey